their full attention, put everything else on the side. The Bible tells us that seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Isaiah 66 verse 5. The Bible also tells us that seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will be added to you. All these things means everything else that you have on your plate. When you seek God first, when you decide to choose him, to make him the focus of your attention that time, he pulls everything else together for you. You realize that you are able to finish all your responsibilities on time. It's like everything works together it's so wonderfully for you when you seek him first. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6 when you go there, he says that he rewards those who diligently seek him. He rewarded me that day when I went access to complain to my husband and he was doing a part of my job. When you see God first, that's what he does. He pulls the resources that you need to finish your job. He pulls out the resources you need for the other areas of your life. All those things will be added to you. He gives you the grace that you need. He gives you the peace that you need. He gives you everything that you need at that time to be able to fulfill everything else. When you choose Christ, you get everything else. You can choose to have everything. Amen. I hear so many women talking about how they're trying to get balance in their lives and you know how they are living a life that is so unbalanced and they are not fulfilled well do you know what balance is balance is when you do what you are supposed to do when you do what god has told you to do at the time that he tells you to do that is balance most of the time we think balance is when you've been able to do a little bit of everything and have accomplished a little bit of everything no if you do all those things and it is not pleasing to the Lord, it's not pleasing to God, that was not a balanced life. But when you do the little that God tells you to do, when you fulfill the little thing and it pleases him, you had a balanced life that day. Now, how do we have a balanced life? How do we know to choose the, the right thing? How do we know to have the right priorities in our lives? That is the question that we need to answer today. You need to know what to do at what time. But usually we have so many things pulling us. What influences your lives? Is it the demands that are in your life? Are you influenced by the circumstances? Are you influenced by pressure? If you let these things, your flesh, influence you, you will not be able to accomplish anything that will be satisfactory to you and most importantly to God. Therefore, we need to have the Holy Spirit lead us and guide us to know what to choose, what to prioritize in our life. There was a time that Jesus had the multitude with him. They were there and they had needs. Some of them need to, needed to be healed. Some were needed prayer. Some needed, you know, to have demons cast out of them. But the Bible said that Jesus left them and went away. He went to the mountain to pray. Now you would ask, did Jesus know that they had all those needs? Did he know, you know, did he have compassion even to minister to them? Yes, he knew that. But what was right for the Lord at that time was to go and spend time with God, to spend time in the presence of God, because that was when he was empowered. That was when he received the power that he needed to come down to all those multitudes and minister to them. You know, we have so many pastors and leaders who tend to the needs of their congregation. They tend to their needs of their members and they leave the part that is really needed and they get burnt out. I've heard of pastors and men who get discouraged and they want to leave the ministry totally. It's because usually their priorities is all messed up. If you choose to minister to God, he will empower you to minister. He will give you the wisdom. He will give you the words to speak. He will give you the power to minister to the people that he has given to you. As you spend time with him, 
it takes care of everybody else for you. Therefore, that is the, the first thing that should be on our list. That should be our priority and that should be our first choice to spend time in the presence of God. The question is, what is valuable to you? What is valuable to me is what I will decide to do at any point in time. If my the time that I spend with God is what is valuable, that is exactly what I'll do. Everything else will be placed down. I will put everything down and give my attention in the presence of God. If it's spending time with my husband, I'll make sure that everything is in place and I'll have the quality time with my husband. And it could be anything else that is valuable to you. It could be your job. It could be your ministry. It could be your business. It could be anything, but your value should line up with what God wants you to do. Therefore, right now, you should, uh, you should question your value system. What is valuable to you? What do you need to be engaged in right now or in the next hour or in, the, the, uh, to, in tomorrow? What should you be doing that is valuable to you? What you need to know is that there is a Martha and there is a Mary in each and every one of us. The Mary in us is the one that goes before the Lord to seek the vision. The Mary in us goes to the Lord to seek direction, to seek counsel, to know what we are supposed to do. I should let you know that God has given each and every one of you a vision. We all have a God-given vision. When you see God, he lets you know the vision that he has for you. And as you know that vision, the Martha in you takes charge. The Martha is the one who is able to plan. Martha is able to organize. Martha is able to implement. We all need Martha and Mary, but we should know which, which, uh, which one we should engage in at any time. We should know, is it Mary or is it Martha? We should go before the Lord each day to be able to ask him what we need to do. As God has given you a vision, you need to write down everything that he requires of you to do. I need you to take a paper and write down everything that God has called you to do. Everything that you want to accomplish. You need to write down whether it's your ministry um, from your spiritual life, whether it's your business, everything that is involved in your life, write down. Make sure you write every single thing down on paper. And every night before you go to bed, go to God and say, God, it is you who has given me these obligations. What do I need to do tomorrow? What do you desire for me to do tomorrow? And I know that God will speak to you. He will place on your heart what you need to do that night. Write it down so that the next morning when you wake up, you won't have things drawing you. You have the phone ringing. You have people demanding your attention. You have different things calling you in different directions. But when you know what God wants you to do, you are able to focus and you are able to do the right task at the right time. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 2 that we should write down the vision. It says that the vision is for an appointed time. You need to write it down and you need to make it plain. As you write everything down, you make it plain. It means you simplify it so that when you come back to read, it's not going to look I say, oh, this is a, a hard work. It's a tremendous. Simplify everything that God wants you to write it down so that you will not forget it. And there's a saying that goes that when you fail to plan, you plan to fail. There are many women in, who have their lives so much jumbled up and they feel unaccomplished. They feel unfulfilled. They are not happy in their lives. This is because they don't have a plan. This is because they don't know the vision and even if they know it, they haven't put down a plan to be able to accomplish what God has given them, what their vision is. Therefore, it's important that you write it down and you make it plain. Where do I need to be? Where do I want to be? Ask yourself, where do I want to be? In a week, where do I want to be in a month? Where do I want to be in a year or even in five years? Where, who do I want to be? What has God spoken about my life that I'm not doing right now? Write all these things down. 
And as you do, you will know exactly what you are doing. You will be able to put down a plan that God has for you. You will have a plan to accomplish the vision that God has for you. Now, when you have, when you have everything written down, you need to categorize them. The first category that each and every one has to have, category A is our spiritual discipline. That is our foundation. That is our basics. That is where we get the wisdom. That, we, that is where we are empowered. That is where we'll be able to influence. That is where we'll be able to influence the other areas of our lives. So I need you to put down on your category A, the time that you spend with God, your spiritual discipline, prayer time, Bible reading, uh, meditation on the scripture, your declaration. The time that we spend with God is what is necessary. That is what is needful for us. Therefore, that should be on our category A. And everything else that God speaks to you in the order that he wants you to, put them down in each category. The things that you can't afford to miss. The things that you can't afford to do, you put them down on your, say, category B or C. But the things that you know you need to do that day need to go on your A category. Therefore, when you wake up in the morning, you are focused and you know exactly what to do. You go to those things. You are able to pull the resources that you need. You are able to have them, whether it's the phone numbers or whatever you need to put together to fulfill those things. You have them available. I know that because we have been so encumbered as women and have not been able to focus and do all that we are supposed to do, God has spoken to some of you to start ministries. God has spoken to some of you to start different organizations, to start um, to, to organize women's conferences and Bible studies and so on and so forth. Now that you know these principles, I need you to sit down and begin to plan. God has a vision for your life, but without a plan, without seeking him first, you will not be able to accomplish these things. I know that you can have it all, but you cannot do that without these principles that God has given to you today. Therefore, I know that you are going to have a fulfilled life, a balanced life. You'll be able to live happily regardless of all the insanity that is going on around you. Stay blessed. God bless you and make sure that you work with these principles that God has imparted to you today. God bless you. Bye-bye.